Hi, this is Saksham and welcome back to this awesome video in which we are going to install Ubuntu inside the VirtualBox. Now, how this is happening? This is happening because of virtualization. I understand if you are a beginner, you might be thinking that what exactly the virtualization is. Let me quickly make you understand about it. So you can imagine it this way that you must be having a hardware layer in which you must have installed any operating system. We can call that operating system as your primary operating system or in a little bit of technical language, we can call it as host operating system. So on host operating system, we go ahead with the next layer in which we use the hypervisors. Now what exactly the hypervisor says, they are just the players that can run your another operating system on your host operating system. And there are plenty of players in the market who are helping you to achieve it. Like you have VMware, you have VirtualBox, you have Parallel Desktop. But in this case, we are going to use VirtualBox because it keeps the cross-platform compatibility approach. So this would be a really nice option for you as well. I understand that installation could be really tiring for you, but if you'll keep the right approach that we'll be taking care about in this video, it will be super easy for you. For example, we will be taking care about correct storage allocation. I know some people might be having a trouble into your C drive that might be congested or having the less space. So we have a solution for that too. We are going to do a really smooth setup. In this, you can also do the bi-directional copy pasting. Your networks will be working. Your Ubuntu will be looking super awesome. Your packages will be all updated. The machine will be fully upgraded. You can tweak it on later on. So we are just going to have a quick tour as well. So this is the only video that you need in your life to install Ubuntu. Let's go ahead with the demonstration, but first let's roll the intro. All right, folks. So let's go ahead and get started with the installation. But first and foremost, we need to gather all the files to complete this whole installation process. And if you face any error throughout the time, just go ahead and comment into the comment section. Or even if you want to support me to keep on making such awesome videos, just go ahead and support me into the comment section. Uh, but by the way, you know, errors are really easy into the beginner level. But when you'll cover the whole Linux journey, you'll realize that errors can be your best friend and then they can hurt you at the same time. But then that's the whole process. That's how you learn. So never be scared from the errors. So first of all, you need to write VirtualBox on Google uh, and then you just need to click on this link that says download virtualbox.org forward slash wiki forward slash downloads. Here you have two of the packages. Uh, the first one is the actual setup, this, this one onto your left hand side. The second one is the extension pack that will help you to make your operating system full screen and it can help into the bi-directional copy paste as well. So yes, things are upgrading from the side of VirtualBox as well. But right now uh, you need to detect that on which operating system you are working currently. So on the basis of that, just use your choice. And right now I am on Windows. So I'm just gonna go with this choice. But in order to save the time, I've already uh, downloaded this file for the setup and here also you don't have to do much of the things you just have to click on accept and download and then your extension pack will also be downloaded so these are the two files that you need to collect before the installation after this go ahead and download ubuntu so ubuntu is quite easy to download as well again you have this download link right here just go ahead and install your desktop version uh, maybe you'll get pro and you'll get your hands on server and the different flavors as well or maybe the cloud but right now you just need to go ahead with simple download ubuntu desktop that will give you the iso so again uh, you'll just simply go ahead and click on download your iso will be downloaded right here and you can sign up for their newsletters as well but i don't prefer that so these are the files that you need to collect and you can see that these files are already right here. You have this extension pack, you have this virtual box setup. You also have Ubuntu ISO. So now I'll get started with the setup. So I'm simply going to double click on the setup of virtual box. I'm just going to hit on yes. Next, I'm going to accept it because I want to use it. And then I can change the location because that's the problem everywhere. Everybody is suffocating their C drives, but I can opt to go on E drive vbox is what i can give the name to a folder i'm just going to simply click on next yes proceed with installation yes i'm going to go with all of these no harm simply going to install 
and this will be installed in few seconds from now. Okay, so now I'm going to start the virtual box. So let's go ahead and click on finish. I already have the snapshot of Kyle Linux because I use it often, so it's stating it here. Apart from this, you'll see it blank. So you might wanna install the package or the extension as well. So that's also very easy. Simply just go ahead and double click and just install. Uh, go in the end and click on I agree. And there you go. So seems like I'm all done with the virtual box. I'm going to restart it because it's always a good practice to restart when you install any external package. So I'm simply going to go ahead with virtual box. Okay, this is how it looks to me. So your home screen should look something like this. Here, you're just going to simply click on new and I'm going to name it as Ubuntu. Again, I'm going to store my VM somewhere else uh, because again, the problem related to the C drive congestion, I'm gonna go in E and maybe I'll create a new folder here. New folder says VM Ubuntu. Okay, so this is the folder that I'll select. Okay, looks good to me. Type will be Linux. Subtype will be Ubuntu 64-bit, that's great. This is by default and here we go with the main part that is base memory and the processors. Now I've seen a lot of people saying that I use this much GBs, this much is enough, this much is not enough. But the actual fact is that you need to ask this from your system, not from a YouTuber or from your friend. So you just simply need to right click onto the taskbar, there you'll have task manager and it will tell you the whole story of your system. So basically you need to go into the performances. One more thing that reminds me is that you need to enable the virtualization. Otherwise you won't see the 64 bit option inside the virtual box. So you simply see right here that you have virtualization enabled. If you don't have virtualization enabled, I have few screenshots. Uh, maybe you might wanna go into the BIOS and you can just enable the Intel R virtualization technology. You just need to enable it. Or if you are using any Asus machine, you have this nice interface with them that says Intel virtualization technology to enable. I repeat, these settings are into the BIOS. But again, you can just go ahead and check your virtualization status by going into the task manager right here. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the memory. So right now, the available memory with me is 23 GB, which is quite a lot. And the second trick to judge the correct one is that you always stay into the green part. So usually 2 GB of memory is enough in order to run the Linux operating systems. But then in order to make it go smooth, I'm gonna go with the 8 GB. About the processor, you have the same thing right there. Uh, when you'll go into the CPU, you'll see that how much cores I have. Currently I have 24 cores and the available are 48 CPUs. So maybe I'll again stay into the green area, but I can give around eight cores. It's all comfortable. It will be different inside your system. So you just need to go ahead and check it yourself. Make sure you don't make your current machine suffocated. So it is gonna go this way. No one else is gonna help you out right here. Okay, so if we talk about the hard disk, now this is a great part. I usually go for 25 GB to 30 GB. Uh, so I'm just gonna extend it 30 GB, but you know, it won't take much longer than 10 to 15 GB, but then a good size is recommended because you're gonna install a lot of packages. So make sure you give it a good space that you don't face any problem later on. It's a very tiring task to you know extend the storage and hard disk right there. So I'm simply gonna go ahead and click on finish. So into the left pane, I am going to click on Ubuntu and then I'm going to click on settings. Now this is the main part, very important one. So now we can see that we have basic settings right here. Uh, in advance, just go ahead and click on bi-directional. Now this will allow you to copy and paste anything at all from your primary operating system or you can say the host operating system to your virtualized operating system. So go ahead with the bi-directional choice. If you wanna drag and drop any file from your host to the virtualized operating system, just go ahead with the bi-directional again. So that is gonna save a lot of your time. Uh, everything is super easy now in VirtualBox. They have given everything forehand. Okay, so now we can cross check. Uh, we have the base memory of nearby 
8192 MB, we have processors right here. Everything looks good. Let's go down a little bit. Okay, here is another main part. You're gonna have to extend it till the end because you're gonna give a lot of video memory so that you don't feel any leg experience or maybe when you use your operating system in a full screen mode, it's all a great experience out there. Uh, give the monitor count to eight. Okay, uh, this looks good to me now. Remote display and recording is not a task for you right now. Okay, next up, uh, you have ISO right in here, right? So you need to give ISO in here. So I'm simply going to choose a disk file. I'm gonna go on desktop and here I have lecture material. I'm going to select the ISO. I'm going to open it right here. Okay. This looks like the operating system just got started because of the background, but it is not like that. You're gonna have to install the whole operating system right from here. Okay, so this looks like it is going to... Okay, so here it is asking me to choose my language. It's English. Uh, you can change few of the settings like typing and everything. It looks fine to me because I've already installed it many times. So I know default is good for me. I'm gonna click on next. I'm gonna go with use wired connection, of course. If you are into the virtual box, I'll update it later on. And then uh, what do you want to do with Ubuntu? I'm simply going to install Ubuntu. I'm not gonna uh, try Ubuntu without making any changes to computer. So I'm just gonna click on next. How would you like to install Ubuntu? Just with the interactive session, if you will be advanced engineer related to Linux, you might wanna use YAML file that can install Linux or you can say the Ubuntu into the multiple systems at a time, which is really cool, right? But then, yes, you're gonna learn that into my upcoming videos as well. I'm just simply going to click on next. Install third-party software for graphics. Of course, I need Wi-Fi hardware as well. I need some of the package and the media formats that can support my MP3 and MP4 files as well and MOV and similar like that. Okay, so now this is not practically going to erase your disk. It is going to erase your virtual disk that we just created into the partition few minutes back. So I'm gonna go with the first system. Please don't panic while doing that. I'm just gonna give the name so let's say computer guy is what I'm going to give here. Password, I'm gonna keep a lengthy one. And then I'm gonna click on next. And then the region is Mumbai Maharashtra. I've reviewed my choices. Everything looks good to me. I'm just gonna click on install from here. So let's wait for a few seconds and it is going to install my operating system. All right, so your Ubuntu installation is all done. It's right in front of your eyes. Uh, it says Ubuntu 24 is installed and ready to use. Restart to complete the installation or continue testing. Any changes you make will not be saved. So certainly I'm just going to restart this. I'm going to hit enter because uh, it is feeling like I'm installing it from a USB drive or something. It says, please remove the installation media. Okay, I'm done. Hitting enter. Let's just go ahead and restart it right here. Okay, seems like my first screen is right here. Let me go ahead and hit my password. Okay, so this is the first welcome screen of Ubuntu, which means your OS is installed correctly. It says enable Ubuntu Pro. I am going to skip it for now. I'm not looking for any paid plans or anything like that. No, don't share my data. And then you can see there are tons of application in uh, Ubuntu now. It's not like same, you know. You have App Center right here. Uh, let, okay, let me just go ahead and go with the scale mode. So let's see how it goes. Okay, looks nice, uh, non-leggy experience, loved it. So now you can see that you have App Center right here. I'm just gonna open it again. Your files are here. Here is the App Center. So you can go with the productivity or development out there. By the way, I just heard that 
Uh, Ubuntu is going to release sudo with the Rust programming next in Ubuntu 25. I don't know how much of that is true, but that's an interesting move because Rust is super fast. So you might wanna install VS Code, Postman, they were not there earlier, you gotta have to install everything from the terminal. But right now, they have really good app center right here. You can go with some of the productivity tool. Brave is what I prefer, but yeah, if you are a Firefox fan or Chrome fan, you can go with these things. Really loved it. So this looks really nice. This is a file architecture, but there is one thing that I'm missing and every Linux user must be missing is that where exactly my terminal is. So I'm simply going to search for my terminal and I'm gonna drag it right here because this is something that I use often. Terminal has been pinned to dash. All right, just dragged it down. Okay, looks good. Now you might wanna go ahead and set some of the settings or you might wanna tweak the visualization by going into the security and the privacy and the display settings, which are easy to go. You can change backgrounds right here. You can change desktop icons. You can go into the display settings. You can tweak it as much as you want. But right now what is important for you is to update and upgrade the system. So for that, you simply just need to fire some command as a root user. And right now you can see that I'm not logged in as a root user. So I'm simply go with sudo hyphen i. That's how I log in for the root. And this is the first time I'm going to log in. And for the rest of my terminal session, I'm gonna stay inside the root. So that's pretty easy instead of writing sudo again and again. So I'm simply going to put my password right here. And boom, I'm inside the root. So once you go inside the root, or maybe you can just use sudo before the command that I'm writing right now. So you're simply just going to write here as apt update or maybe you can use end and operators to fire two commands at the same time. So our next command will be how to fully upgrade it. So here maybe you can write here as apt full hyphen upgrade. Now this will take few minutes but this will set your operating system right. Go with y to continue and then it is going to install a lot of upgrades and the packages that I'm really looking forward for. Okay, seems like it is successfully upgraded. Uh, now you might wanna cat your current operating system. So for that, you can simply write cat forward slash etc forward slash OS hyphen release to confirm that if I am on a newer version so now you can see that I am on Ubuntu 24th version, which is the latest one and everything is right here. Looks cool, looks awesome. Uh, there is one more thing that I would like to tell you that when you upgrade your system, there are files or packages that comes up with errors or they are not completely downloaded. So you might wanna remove unused packages by a command that says apt auto clean. Yes, it's as simple as that. So again, it is going to do its work and it is going to remove the unused packages, basically. Okay, seems like it is done. Super fast, super easy. So next thing I might wanna check if my internet is working all fine. So I'm gonna open the Firefox right here. Okay, looks like my Firefox is here. So I'm just gonna go with duck, duck, go, let's see if it is able to search that. Oh, that's an irony, searching for DuckDuckGo on Google. But I never knew if the default URL was Google. I might wanna change it to DuckDuckGo because that's what I use. And seems like internet is all working fine. So that's a good news for us. That's a complete setup of Ubuntu right here in front of your eyes. Computer needs to restart to finish installing updates. Uh, yes, definitely I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna restart it later. Okay guys, so this was a quick tour of installing Ubuntu inside your virtual box. Now your machine is all ready to run like a beast. It is fully upgraded, updated. You got a quick tour as well. Uh, so I hope you liked the video. This video takes a lot of efforts to record them. So just go ahead and subscribe this channel. Make sure you put something in comment section to appreciate us if you are loving the quality or if you have any feedbacks, I welcome that. See you again into the next video.